Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're making a beautiful toadstool. This is a follow along exercise so you can either download the mushroom model and paint along with me, link in the description, but I will also go through how I made the model so you can follow along with that as well. If you like what I do then do check out my website and the playlists on this channel for more great content. I'm using a display tablet from XP Pen. Again, you can find out more about that in the description. This is meant as a beginner's tutorial to texture painting, but you must understand the basics of the interface and it's probably a bit tricky for complete beginners. And also this video is sponsored by Skillshare. It's very helpful to keep the channel running and keep me making content. Skillshare have kindly given me access to their online learning and I've enjoyed the chance to take a look and try it out. So Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes particularly suited to creators. They've got a lot of categories that will probably interest you such as animation and 3D art, as well as learning about things like freelancing and entrepreneurship. I've recently been taking a look at NFTs and artwork and a bit about SEO as well. I found the courses really interesting. They were nice and short, but just the right length and the teachers were great. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. When you join, you can also try one of Skillshare's live classes. So experiencing real-time inspiration as you connect with teachers whilst watching and working along with other members. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on the link in the description will get a one month free trial. So you can start exploring your creativity today. Okay, so let's start by making the mushroom. I'll delete the default cube and add in a cylinder instead. So Shift A to add, mesh, and then cylinder. I'm going to change the parameters down the bottom here and I'm going to give it eight vertices. Always choose something that's divisible by four, in my opinion, then you can mirror things easily. So when I press enter, you can see my cylinder change. I'll come around to front view and move that up on top of the X axis here on top of the floor. So G, Z, then one should do that nicely. So grab in the Z axis, one blender unit. Let's go across into edit mode with tab, do a loop cut around the middle. So control R and I think I'll do two. So use the wheel to do two loop cuts like this, left click once and then left click again to set. I'll scale those up. So S to scale, let's grab the top ones, G then Z and scale them in. So we've got a sort of base of our mushroom there. Okay, now if I press E to extrude, and then scale outwards, we can start building the top. So that does that sort of thing like that. Looks a bit odd at the moment, but if I keep doing that, E to extrude, scale outwards. I'll bring this one down, so G then Z. Still looking a little bit odd, but E to extrude, scale outwards, and G to grab in the Z axis and move that upwards. You can kind of see what shape I'm making now. And then we can E to extrude, move that upwards, S to scale and bring it down to there. And it certainly needs a few more sort of rounded bits to it. So I'll select this edge loop going around the middle here. So two to go to edge mode, alt left click on one of the edges going around, select that edge loop and then control B will bevel that control B and I can create more of a curve to it like this. Okay. So we've got our basic shape. I'm going to adapt it slightly because it's very chunky at the top. So what I'm going to do is each one of these around the edge, I'll just keep selecting these all the way around and then control B to bevel those. And that will make it look more rounded, but won't add too many polygons. Most of the time with hand painted objects, you're trying to keep the poly count down. Now, if I select this edge loop here and press GG to edge slide, that will bring those much closer to the other ones. And I can bring them all the way down so they're touching like this. However, that doesn't actually merge the vertices. I'll undo that. What I need to do is press this button here, auto merge vertices. Now when I press GG to edge slide, when I bring them together, now when I press G, you can see they're all joined together. So I'll just scale that in, move that up slightly, just into position around there. And we've got a fairly nice shape. I'm going to poke this face at the top. If you don't know what that is, if you go to face mode, select that top face, and then go to the face menu here, or control F is the shortcut for that. There's poke faces, and that does that. Now I can select this edge loop coming around here, GG to edge slide and bring that down. And I've got even more of a rounded top. And there we have it, a delightful mushroom. Now, it would be good if I got these vertices as well and merged those. So let's select this edge loop, GG, to edge slide, bring those out, and then scale those in. And I'll bring those up slightly as well. Okay, so hopefully you've got the idea of how I made this mushroom base. I will edit this model slightly though, because I think it's a bit uniform and basic. Maybe give it a bit more of a curve at the bottom here. I'll do another loop cut in here and maybe rotate that slightly, G to grab. 
and just do a few edits around the place. So just making the base a little bit more curved and shaped. I'll grab an edge and use the proportional edit up here. So the shortcut for that is O, press G to grab. I can change that circle of influence as I call it with the wheel of my mouse and then bring it down, bring it upwards slightly and change the shape. I might even change the top slightly just to distort it and make it look more mushroomy. There we go, not a bad mushroom. I think also I'll select these top faces and press Control plus. That will grow the selection. So Control plus all the way to the middle there and maybe rotate it and turn it on its side slightly. Not sure exactly how I want it yet. And I like the way it's looking. Great stuff. Okay, so we're ready for unwrapping. So I go to the UV image editor up here. Let's make my UV space a little bit bigger on the left hand side. And we're automatically in edit mode here. So I can select all my shape by pressing A. And you can see the current UVs are all a bit messy. I can press U to unwrap and Smart UV Project. It's a nice simple way of doing things. You can unwrap it in a more detailed way, but it doesn't make too much difference for texture painting. Make sure you put the island margin up though. I think 0 0.03 seems to work best. Press OK, and you can see it split up there. Now I could tidy this up a bit, but it won't make a huge amount of difference for texture painting. If you want to know more about that, then check out my UV editing playlist. So we go to texture painting over here. So I'm in texture paint mode, and it's all purple at the moment. That's because it's got no texture or material. We can tell that because it says no textures over here. Now what I like to do is bring down an extra window so you can see what's going on. And I'll change this to the shader editor. I'll press N to get rid of that side panel. So we can see here that it's got no texture. As soon as I press the plus button here and choose base color, and I'll call this mushroom color six because I've done this a couple of times before. I always change from 1024 to 2048. It can just be 2000, but it's force of habit. It used to be that 2048 is more efficient, but it doesn't make much difference these days. Change the base color to a color that you want the top to be. I'm going for a sort of purpley, almost maroony type color, fairly dark, so reasonably saturated on the outside of the circle, and the value is quite low. Okay, turn the alpha off, make sure that's unticked, because that's to do with transparency and we don't need it. And then we can press OK. As soon as we do that, you can see it fills it in with this maroony color, and we've got a new material over here. I call this mushroom. So I've done this once more in this particular file when I was testing it. And now we're ready for painting. Now what would be helpful is if we could isolate the top from the bottom. Well, if I go into edit mode with tab and alt left click on this face loop around here and press control plus once again to grow my selection up to that point there. And with that selected, if I press control tab to go back to texture paint mode and then press this button here, I can isolate different areas. And I just have to press Control I, which is selecting the inverse, and I can jump between the two. So let's fill in the base with a sort of lighter whitish color. But before I do that, I need to come down to the bottom here in the workspace and tool settings under the options. I need to change the bleed. I'm going to put it up to 16. 16 pixels will protect you from reducing this texture size because it's a 2K image at the moment. And if you want to take it into a game, then you might want to reduce it way down to 512 or even lower. 16 pixels will protect you from any bleed. And that's why we had a good distance between our islands so the textures wouldn't overlap. So let's go to the fill brush here. A sort of grayish color like this would be good because I can make it a bit brighter and a bit darker. And let's press the fill button. And you can see it's very close actually. 16 pixels is just missing the overlap there. It's a tiny bit of a glitch there, but that should come out fine. So I was only just close enough with my 0 0.03, I think it was, on my island spacing. Now I've just noticed I had the wrong bit highlighted because I was flicking between the two. So I'll undo that and I'll press Control I and actually get the stalk this time and fill that in. That makes more sense. So do make sure you have the right bit highlighted like me. Okay, this sort of shading isn't particularly good. If I turn off my mask button here, it's very shiny at the moment and it's not really working for texture painting. There's a couple of ways we can view this for texture painting, but the easiest one to set up, if I come up to here and change the lighting to flat, it gives us exactly what I want in terms of what will eventually be outputted. So it takes away all the shadows and we as the artist have to paint those in. So let's go back to the mask and I'll choose the top to start with. So control I so I can start painting the top and go across to my brush over here. If you need to change your brush size, then press F and move your mouse side to side. Mine's fine as it is. Now to create a color palette, I can press S and then left click, and that creates a color palette in here under the color palette section. You might have to open that up. 
And to start with, I want to create some shading underneath here. Now, when I added the color palette, it didn't actually select that color. If you press S without left clicking, that will select that color and S with a left click will actually add it to the color palette. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll bring my color down a bit and go slightly across the blues. I tend to have blues for shading and the warmer colors, the yellows and oranges for highlights. So let's come into here and start painting. Now, because I've got a graphics tablet, my strength is being changed by my pen pressure just here. So I can press lightly and less comes out. I can also change the radius, which I like to use as well. So when I press lightly, the radius changes as well. But you can't do that with a mouse. I'll bring the strength down a touch and then I can go nearer the edges, just highlight, just giving it a nice bit of shade. Be careful not to go over the edge like this, otherwise you get this sort of anomalies. So you've got to make sure you're facing it with your viewport, whatever you're painting. So there we have the shading underneath our mushroom. And that's what I mean by we're painting the shade in. Let's do the highlights at the top then. So I'll choose a nice warm color. Let's come across the warms and make it bright. A bit more orangey, somewhere around here, I reckon. And I'll add that to my color palette by pressing this little plus sign there and then start painting at the top. And again, I'm using my pen pressure to slowly build up some paint. A little bit further out. And let's see how we're looking. Okay, I'll bring the strength down a fair bit and press F to resize my brush and make it a bit smaller. And just paint some of this in a bit more. And it's a little bit tough to sort of build it up. And what we can use is the smudge brush to smudge it together. So the smudge brush here, and we can start just smudging it down. The smudge brush can be a little bit of a pain though, because it does lag a little. You can see if I go to edit mode, that's where the vertices are. And it's sort of made a slight difference in the paint and the way it's been added to the surface. So I'm just kind of sorting that section out a little bit. And there we've got a bright top and a dark bit underneath. Now I think it needs to be a little bit darker going all the way around the bottom here as well. So back to my brush, S to sample that color and let's add that to the palette as well. Then we've got a nice dark purple there. Strength quite low, make sure my viewport's facing this way and then I can come around and just sort of paint these dark areas in. But you have to be careful. Can you see there's a slight sort of glitch there as it went around the corner? It doesn't seem to sort of go around the corners of objects. Okay, so that's coming up around the base now. Not too bad. Let's do a similar thing with the base now. So control I and I can select the base. I've got my gray color there. I can now do the shadows. So bring it into the middle. We're fairly dark there. I'll just come up a little bit and I'll give it a tiny bit of color. So across the blues and I can then start painting. And you see how useful it is to isolate the base from the top. However, I'm getting these sort of anomalies as I go round because it's trying to paint around the corners. I'll undo that and there is a handy hint for this. If we come down to the options, if we turn off occlude and back face, I can then paint this in and it does paint all the way around. It's sometimes a little bit glitchy, but it sort of seems to be working today, so that's nice. So with occlude and back face culling both unticked, you can paint through your object. So just paint very lightly down from the top and I'm being a little bit rough because I'm trying to give it the look of a texture and not just a flat surface. So it's coming down from the top there, adding a bit of shade, and we want some from the bottom as well. So we come up from the bottom, I'm gonna to have to come around the side a bit more because it's not quite getting the base. So you can see the angle I'm painting at, that's all important, that angle for getting it right. And you can see it's being a bit more glitchy at the bottom here, isn't it? You do have to be a bit careful. You can see I'm painting a bit high on this side here. That's because I'm at an angle and then I'm trying to get this and then it's occluding and going through to the back. So we can probably turn this off now, I think. I'll undo a few of those steps as well. So it's not too high. And then just manually go around and bring up the shade. Make my brush a bit smaller. So F to resize and just bring up a little bit of texture like that. Okay, so nice and rough. But if I come up to my mask button, we can sort of see the outline of our mushroom there looking delightful. Okay, let's add some detail now. So I'll press on my button again, and I press Control I, and we'll go back to the top for our detail. Now with the brush selected, if I come up to the top here, I can click here to create a new brush, and I'm going to call this Spots. I can then come down to the stroke. Now where it says space, we can actually change this to dots. I actually prefer to keep it on space and then just change the spacing. So turn that up to probably about 100, 
and let's see what this looks like. Let's zoom in a bit, make my brush a bit smaller, and you can see them there very lightly. So I'll just put up the strength. I haven't chosen my color yet, but so you can see what's going on. I've got some spots. So that's the spacing of 100. Let's just change my brush size just a touch and see what that might look like when that happens. It's a little bit close, so maybe 120, somewhere around there. Doesn't matter too much. Now they're very uniform at the moment when I do this. We don't really want them that uniform. What we can do if I undo that is change the jitter and that jumps them around a bit. So 0 0.8 I'm on and we've got a nice bit of jitter there and that's looking pretty good. But we need a bit more color to it. When I do this, it just adds a light purple. I'll undo that. I think we need a really bright, vivid orangey color like at the top. But what I'm going to do is change the blend mode. So up to the blend mode here, change it from mix to color dodge. This is a great fun brush this. Now if I brush across there, can you see how the color changes as it goes over the different areas? Color dodge, if I come over to here again, is a lighten method, but it sort of distorts the color slightly. It's quite clever and quite fun. I'll undo those strokes though, because I want to up the strength a bit and up the brightness. And then let's see what we can get. Oh, that's quite fun, isn't it? Now you do have to be careful with this brush. Can you see how it distorts when it's going away from the viewport and around the corners? So I'll undo those. You have to really make sure that you're in line with the viewport. Do a few, move around, do a few. And those are even distorted, so I'll undo that. And every now and again, you will have to keep undoing when it starts to stretch. These are probably a little bit big, but I'll do a few more of them. And if I press a little lightly, you can see that my brush size changes because I have that option enabled under the radius. So giving it a nice lot of dots and spots. I'll bring my brush down a bit and brush quite lightly and do some minor little speckles now. I'm trying to change my pressure ever so slightly to add some variation as well. Can you see that color dodge working really nicely as it goes over the top as well as the bottom? We could change the color of it really slightly as well. Maybe come across this way slightly more just to offer a bit more variation. Maybe come across the blues even. Can you see how the color changes when it goes up to the top here and goes more purpley? Really good fun doing the dots with the color burn, I think. Okay, so we're sort of getting there. For me, it's not quite vivid enough yet. So I'm going to use that color dodge, but I'm going to go back from the spots to my just normal draw brush. Can you see the usefulness of having a draw brush? This has got the original settings with the stroke method of space. And I'm going to change this to the color dodge as well. And come across to this ready color over here, bring it nice and bright, but the strength nice and low. So a nice vivid color again. And I'm just going to increase the vibrancy at the top here. So I'm pressing lightly as well, but I just want to give it a bit more oomph. And can you see how that color dodge is changing the vibrancy as well as making it lighter? So it's making these reds kind of more vivid and saturated. I just think that's really good fun. I'm gonna make it really quite bright at the top here, like this, almost like a glow, isn't it? And you can see that sort of glow there. I like that as it comes down. So it's sort of catching the sun and it's got this beautiful glow to it. Okay, so that's not bad. I feel like we need to do a bit more shade in a moment, but I'll just add a little bit more to it around here. And with the spots brush, back to the spots brush, I'll do some really bright vivid ones. So 100% strength and we'll come across to the yellow this time brightness all the way up. Small brush though. And let's see what we can get. So some really vivid spots. Not too many, just one or two nice and big ones, just to make it really pop. That's quite fun, isn't it? Okay, let's work on the base and some details within the shadows. So I'm still on the spots. So I'll change across to the text draw, change it from color dodge. This time I can use the multiply you can use that or the color burn. Color burn is kind of the same as color dodge, but the opposite. Multiply is probably the better one to use. It doesn't work so well with color burn, but with the multiply, across the blues again, the cool colors and nice and dark. And I'll create those gills at the bottom. In fact, let's put the strength up and bring my brush in. So just creating those gills. 
So a little bit of texture. Now going fairly close to the edge, and with some of these edges that have spilled over, I'll sort of increase them so they're like a cut in the side of the mushroom. Now it looks a bit jaggedy, so I've got to watch out for that. I might just sort of increase the cut distance across there so it loses that jaggediness. Can you see how I've done that? It loses a bit of it anyway. <laughs> it's not foolproof. You don't have to have every one going up, just one or two going around the place like this. Vary the thickness as well. I might create a little bit more texture in here as well in the gills. Always just move back every now and again, make sure it's working. And there's a little bit of variation there, that's nice. Probably widen some of these as well. Now with these slight elements of detail, you can see I've made a sort of crevice here with the multiply brush. What you can do as well is get the screen brush or the color dodge, it doesn't matter too much. The color dodge works really nicely, but I'll show you the screen as well. So screen, come across the warms and bring up the value. Probably bring the strength down a bit to start off with. You can just give the edge a little highlight like this. And can you see how that looks like it's catching the light? It might be a bit too strong though. And I'm just looking for my edge slightly there. So I want to sort of give it a very slight edge across here, as if that's catching the light. I'm going a little bit wobbly to make it look organic. So I'm going up the sides of these slightly, just as if they catch the light on the edges. Step back a little bit and you can see those gills or cuts in the mushroom are kind of working. I think some of them need to go a bit higher, but I'll sort that out in a moment. And just fill in a few more of these. I'm mainly doing it on one side. You can do it on both, but generally the light will sort of come from one direction slightly, so you'll have a dominant side, as it were. Okay, let's go back to the multiply now. Brush a little bit smaller and just bring some of these up. Oh, I've got to bring my brush temperature down, value down, and across the blues. So right up. Watch out overlapping these dots. Make sure they don't interfere. I can afford to go up a little bit higher with some of these as well. Going right up to that dot though, that's a bit annoying. I'll undo those. Won't go right up to the top. And that's looking quite nice. A bit more of a highlight though, let's go back to that screen brush, cross to my lighter colour and bring the value up and just fill that in there. A little bit less strength and just a tiny bit of highlight across here. I think that's working out okay. Also we can do a couple of dents. So start with the multiply and across to our calls, down in value, nice big brush, and then just create a sort of dent bit like this. At the top, where it's closest to the top of the mushroom, you make it a little bit darker, so at the top there, and less at the bottom. I'll explain more about that in a moment, but I'll do a few more. So another dent here. And try not to make them completely circular to add that sort of element of variation. Okay, so we've got those sort of dents in there. Now back to the screen brush. Cross the warms, value up, smaller brush. And we sort of create a light patch on the bottom here like this. And a tiny bit at the top and you can see that looks like a dent in our mushroom. Probably a little bit dark actually. But I think we'll be okay. If it's too dark you can sort that out, which I'll show you how to in a moment. And again, a little bit lighter at the bottom where it catches the light. So if it's too bright, then make your screen brush really light, so not too much strength. Try and find a similar size and then just brighten it up just a touch. Might have to change that to the purple color. I can sample that, S to sample, so I'm on the purple color now. And then I can yeah, use the screen brush to bring that back up. Might use the color dodge here. And that will go closer to the ready color up the top there. And it's sticking to the purple down here. That's working nicely. I might have to change the screen for this to lighten it. Yeah, that's working a bit better. Might need to experiment a bit, but the color dodge uses the color that's available. That's why it wasn't really working so well. Needs a bit of smudging now though. 
If ever you make mistakes, you can sort of smudge things back together like this, sort of blur it out. Sometimes you have to go over it again a little bit, but you can sort of recover mistakes. Other programs have things on layers, which is helpful. Blender hasn't got there yet. Okay, so we've got some sort of dents in there. It's working okay. I feel like this edge needs to be highlighted a little, a little bit more, so I'll go to my screen brush again. It's on the purple already. Nice low strength and a fairly big brush size this time, just to give that highlight a little bit more oomph. Looks a bit thin at the moment, as I think it needs to be a bit more rounded. So a bigger highlight will make it seem more rounded. But it's a much softer highlight if it's bigger. Okay, I think that helped. Let's work on the base. So control I to start working on the base. To flip that around, that's our texture mask, remember, and we're selecting the inverse. So if I go to edit mode, you can see they're selected there. Now back to the multiply brush, and let's add some detail first. So fairly cool, nice small brush, and then a few sort of linear details like this, I suppose. Lines, basically. Linear doesn't quite make sense. So just giving a bit of texture, and then down from the top as well. Basically, I thought this makes sense for adding texture. It looks more like a marrow now, though. A few dents as well. Remember, slightly more at the top, slightly less at the bottom. That's nice. Now across to the screen brush. And a nice little light color, something around here. And we're just getting that highlight. Quite low strength at the moment, but it seems to be working. A little highlight around the bottom like this. It's good. And now a bit of highlight on the edge of these, whatever these rib things are. I feel like I've seen mushrooms with this anyway. Seems to look all right. Okay, so that's, yeah, that's sort of working. Marrow-esque, but it's all right. Now let's see what it looks like together. And it's not looking too bad, but it's a bit gray, that bottom piece. So I'm going to go back to that isolation mode and across the color dodge again, using a nice sort of orangey, maybe reddy color. Nice and bright and a little bit more strength. And then let's sort of add a little bit of warmth in there. Can you see how that just immediately changes the look and feel? And even if I go over the dark bits, it gives them a reddy tinge, which I think is great. So the color is sort of just catching these bits here. So this bit's under the base, so that's in shadow. This is just catching a bit of color. I might make this top section a bit darker. So let's come across to the color burn so you can see what that looks like. This is more intense than the multiply. So bring the brush right down and let's bring it to a purple this time. And you can see that sort of adding a bit of richness there, but you can see it also making it quite dark. But it's adding that nice little bit of color variation. I might be going a bit too far, so let's, uh, I'll just tone that back a little bit. So undo those a touch. And let's come up to the mask button. Uh, that's not too bad. It's probably a little bit over the top with the shadow. I can bring some of those down a little bit using the smudge brush. Make that nice and thin, and then I can just sort of smudge these down a little bit. Just be aware that if you turn that button off, you will actually be able to affect the whole object. So up the top here as well. Just watch. So just always be aware of those things. I'll smudge this in a little bit. We don't have to worry too much about the base, but I'll just smudge them in so we can't see that. It might be that we end up seeing this bit at the top here, so we can just smudge that in just a touch. That's the only thing when you isolate faces, they do tend to be really harsh and have a sort of very harsh line between the two. So we're just sorting that out a little bit. And that's looking kind of nice. Might just isolate it again, control I and do a bit of a color burn under on the underneath under here. Again, not too strong, but just enough to give it a bit of color variation. Try out different colors. I'm going across the warms just for the sake of seeing what it looks like. Try some dark blues. You can't really see a huge amount of difference. It's just making it a lot darker really. Okay, let's turn that off and see what we've accomplished. And I think that's working really nicely. I feel like the edge is possibly still a little bit too harsh. Maybe it was the wrong thing to put a highlight around here and perhaps maybe some shadow going up might have looked a bit better. Let's try that with the color burn whilst we're here then. Just slowly build up some shadow and just see what it looks like. 
that's possibly a bit better it doesn't look so kinked then still using the color burn it adds a sort of richness which I quite like but the multiplier is a little bit more controllable so I'd stick with that as a beginner if I were you for darkening things up and I think that's working really nice a last few highlights might be nice so onto the color dodge for the highlights back across to those rich warm colors nice small brush and then just go in and add a few oh, strength up a little bit just to make some of these pop a little bit I'll put the strength up even further it makes them look a little bit like they're sticking out as well so it gives it a bit more texture a few at the top as well put the strength right up and then and I think those are really helping give it some real vibrancy just tidy the smudge up a little bit I think we can add a tiny bit more brightness to the base as well at this point so I'll bring the strength down a touch though and we can just whoop, bring that up a little bit it's a bit green so I'll add a bit more warmth it looked green because I was too close to the greens here so I've moved away from the greens to add a little bit less so what I would call warmer color and I think I prefer that and I really like how that's come out okay the last thing to do which you must remember is to go to image and save this image so for rendering I've come across the shading tab and I've put it on this sort of grassy pedestal type thing here you can just use a plane and if you want to know more about how I made the grass then do comment below and I'll probably make a tutorial on that I've also got an HDRI in the background that's not actually important it's only going to affect the grass because we're going to set this up so it's not affected by the lighting so the first thing we need to do is to make it less jaggedy so we right click and shade smooth so that's well on its way but it's really shiny so we need to go down to the bottom here make sure we're on object I'm in world at the moment and here's my color going into the principled BSDF into the material output just like we had it from texture painting now we don't actually want it to go through the principled BSDF we're going to change this so delete this out shift A shader emission and you can plug the color into the color and the emission into the surface and it looks exactly as it was when we painted so giving it a shader with an emission of one will do this to it and then you can render out your scene and be very proud of yourself so there's the final toadstool or mushroom in all its glory do comment below with any thoughts that you might have. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.